Hello everyone, welcome to another video of Trailhead Geek. In this video, we are going to cover Apex REST callout unit from the module Apex Integration Services. So in this module, we are going to simply uh, create an Apex class that calls a REST endpoint and it will return a string type of data which will contain the animal name as specified in this challenge. We will also create the test classes and also create the mock data for the same. Now, jumping on to our challenge, uh, we will just quickly launch our play, uh, Trailhead Playground, which I have already done this. Uh, and from here, I have chosen this developer console. Opening this up, we, when we'll, uh, this will load, you click on file, create new Apex class and name as specified over here in create an Apex class. I'll just copy this, paste it over here, click OK. So this will create an Apex class for me by the name animal locator. Now the next is uh, method name. So get animal name by method is the name of the method and it must accept an integer and return a string. So I'll create a method likewise. So public static uh, string is the return type specified. This is the name and integer is the parameter that I need to pass here. So ID is the variable that I'm taking over here. The next step is uh, we have to hit this endpoint. This is the endpoint URL specified over here and return the value of the name property. So name of the animal should be returned here. So first of all, I'll create an instance of HTTP, which will specify that this is a REST API. So this is how it is done. Now uh, I want to request data from the endpoint. So I'll create an instance of HTTP request, which will request to get the data. So this is the variable name is equals to new HTTP request. Now, after the instance, I'll use this instance variable request, which will uh, set the endpoint from which we want to fetch our data. So endpoint is the URL, which is specified over here. So I'll simply just copy this. And in single inverted commas, I'll paste this. Now I have skipped this ID variable. Why? Because this, is, this has to be dynamically fetched from the parameter that is being passed from here. So I'll copy this ID variable and append this or concatenate it with this uh, URL and terminate. Now this is done. Now next is uh, we have to also specify to the system that this is, uh, we want to get the data. So we are going to use get method. So HTTP, uh, REST API has many methods uh, like HTTP get, post, patch, delete, etc. Over here we are getting the data. So I'm going to use get one. Now everything will, uh, will be stored in HTTP response. We are going to get the response when this API will be hit. So I'll create a variable response of type HTTP response and it will store the data, whichever, whatever is, uh, you know, received after hitting the API. So I'm going to pass this over here and whatever data has been coming from uh, after hitting this API, uh, it will just, uh, store in this uh, HTTP response type of variable response, right? Now, after this, I have to check if everything is fine, status is okay, uh, then only my main logic should execute. Otherwise, it should end the uh, logic. So simply what I'll do is I'll check using the response variable dot, there's a method uh, dot get status code. So if a status code is equal to 200, that means everything is fine and I'm getting my response. So everything will be uh, worked inside this uh, if block. So here I'm getting my data in the form of string form object. In a minute, I'll tell you how I come, came to know that my data is in the form of string and object. Before that, I'll just create a result variable of type map of string object and specify or assign the deserialized JSON string, uh, the JSON string, string is simply the response that we are getting after hitting the API. So response dot, I'll get the body of this response. Now this JSON dot deserialize untype is in the form of uh, object, uh, which is uh, 
which you can see over here line on number 10 the illegal assignment from object to map so this is object and result is type of map so we need to just make sure that the data on both side of the equals are of similar type so what we are going to do is we will just simply type cast this right hand side as well into map of string and object so this is it is uh, this is how we can typecast it. Now the thing which I said that our result is coming in the form of map of string and object. So we'll see that. So how we can see, so I'll copy this uh, URL and go into this. So this is the URL that I'm, uh, we are taking up in our uh, this Epix class. And for ID, I will just say it is one. So on one ID, this is giving me data. So if you look closely, you can see the animal is there. There is semicolon. And from this starting bracket till this ending bracket, this is the value. So animal is key. And this from this bracket to this bracket, this is value. So this is a key value pair, which specify that it is a map. And animal, uh, so this is a string, keys of type string. And this is of type object. As you can see, this object has many attributes like ID, name, eats, says. So these are the attributes associated in this object. So it is a map of type string and object. Now in this value, uh, that is object type of value, we need to fetch the name one. So first of all, I'll get the data associated with the key animal. So for that, I need to create another map. I'll say this if condition name it as animal is equals to new map. Now I'll use this animal map to fetch the data across animal key. So I'll use the results dot get. Now the key is here animal. Now this is again in the form of object and this is map of string and object. So we have to again type cast it. Otherwise it will give me an error uh, like it is giving below line number 12 has the error of illegal assignment. So this is how I'm going to type cast it. Now we now have everything, all the values that are associated with this key animal. So simply uh, after closing this if block, I will just uh, get the name value from the uh, attribute name. So what I'm going to do is again use this animal map dot get. So now here key is name. I want to fetch the name. So this is simply I'm going to do. And since this is of type string, I want to return and simply just put the return statement. So this is just how uh, this class is going to supposed to be or look like. Uh, so this is a, you can implement this way. It is saving and now it is looking fine. Now, next up, we have uh, create a test class. So, test class has to be named animal locator test. So, I'll copy this, create a new Apex class by the same name. Click OK. Now, this has to be test class. So, I'll just simply specify that this is a test class, it's by is test annotation. Now next is the test class uses a mock class called animal uh, locator mock. So now what we are going to do is I'll just simply copy this again and create a new Apex class by the name, this animal locator mock. So this is uh, not an illegal name. So I think uh, there was one space coming up. So I'll paste it in. So there is a space after K. So I just erase that space and okay. So this has created an, uh, Epix class again. So I'll say is test. And this is supposed to be global class animal lock, uh, locator mock. Now uh, this will implement HTTP callout mock and brackets open up. Now, the next thing uh, we have to do here is we have to introduce a method again 
of type HTTP response. Why this is HTTP response? Because in uh, Epic's class, if we see that we are storing data after hitting the API into this kind of variable only. So that's why this return type will be the same. And respond is the method name. And it will have the parameter as HTTP request by the same name request. Let's align this. Okay. Now, uh, what next is, uh, I am just simply, so basically what is a uh, mock class is, so mock class uh, basically create a fake response. So Epic's class uh, or test methods don't support callouts, right? And uh, test methods or classes which try to perform the callouts usually fails. So here comes the mock callouts to our rescue to create the test data for our uh, web services. So what actually happens here is uh, you are telling the runtime that I know what this web service will return. So instead of calling it during test, just return this data. That is the data provided in mock, uh, mock callout. We simply create a fake response. The response which we will get by hitting the endpoint URL, we are creating this in the mock class instead of hitting the uh, endpoint URL. Otherwise, because we are going to get error if we directly hit that web service. So we are creating a fake response here. So uh, how we can create a fake response is just HTTP response. Response is equals to I'll create an instance of HTTP request. Sorry, HTTP response. And after this, I am going to use this response variable to set certain parameters or methods like header. So key will be of content type and value will be of application JSON. Okay, now, uh, to set the body, that is the response which we are expecting uh, when we actually hit the uh, web service. We will set that in set body. And in body, what we are going to do is we will simply just go to our Epix class, copy this URL, okay, without ID, and just paste it over here. Just paste uh, it over here. So you can see that uh, after using that URL, we are getting this list uh, of animal is the key and there are certain values, uh, list of values that is majestic, badger, fluffy bunny, scary bear and chicken. These are the uh, values that we are getting over here. So what I'm going to do, I will just copy this and in developer console, going back to our mock class, I'll paste this over here. So this is the fake response that I'm creating. This is the fake data that will come into our test class and check for uh, whether whatever we are implementing is up to the mark. Now just simply response dot set status code. So status code is 200 because Every, when everything works fine, this has to be 200. And just simply return this response. So I think there is some, okay, this is extra. So this is the mock data which, which we have created. So test class, we cannot create a web service or call endpoint, hit you, uh, endpoint URL from test class. So we create mock class. Now, uh, what we are going to do in our test class is simply uh, make this private, right? And uh, animal locator test is the class name. Now here we are going to create a method test static void. And method name, let me just check if there is given any in the challenge. 
So this is the test class name. This is mock. No. So here uh, it is not given what name we should write. So I'll just simply give animal locator mock test. So this is our method name. I'm opening the bracket. Now in try and catch, we will just uh, check or uh, take our coverage of the test class. So in catch method, I am just simply passing if there is any exception, then catch this here and just sim system dot debug, simply just do system dot debug. Hey, this exception has occurred. Right, and here I'll just simply get message, display the message. Now in try block, I'll call my uh, my FX class. So before that, I have to just call the mock to set mock here and HTTP callout mock. I have to pass parameters here, class, comma, new. The uh, mock class name, which we have taken here is an animal locator mock. So I'll copy this here and paste it. So this will pass the mock data. Now I will store the result uh, or I can say, I will call my uh, Apex class whose coverage I want to pick up. So animal locator is my class name and the method name is get animal by ID. So I'll copy this and paste this here. And here I have to pass a parameter. So I'll say uh, of integer type. So one is the ID which I'm passing here. Now, if I just go back to my uh, endpoint URL and pass ID here also. So you can see here the name is chicken. So I'll simply just copy this and it will use this for system.assert equals so now actual value is we, what we have taken from our endpoint URL and expected is simply this result. So I'll paste it here. So this is the simple uh, test class that we will uh, that we have here. So just simply click on save. Anything else is left. Unit test must cover all line of codes. 100% uh, code coverage, which we'll check right now. And uh, run all tests. OK. Now what we are going to do is we will just go to our test and uh, you can see right now it is zero. So first of all, just have a look here. This is our uh, Apex class. This is our test class and this is our mock data class. So we will go to test, always run asynchronous and click on run all. So this has run our Apex uh, test class. So all the methods are being covered here and you can see 100% code coverage is also coming up. So going back again to our challenge, we can see here and check if our challenge has been completed or not. This is taking a little time. So you can see, here we go, uh, this challenge is completed. In the next video, we will cover other units or modules. Stay tuned. Thank you.